Marnie Marnie Galloway. Thank you, Matt and Brad. Thank you all for being here today. Um, I'm so grateful for the Chicago Comics community. Uh, today has been a super shitty, weird day. And I'm really grateful to be spending it here with everyone. Um, in memory of my weird Aunt Missy, all of my sales today are going to the be donated to the Suicide Prevention Hotline. Um, so, yeah, thank you. I, yeah, it's a sad thing to talk about, but thank you. Um, yeah, she was a wonderful weirdo. My, I didn't know her very well, but she had a easily four foot wide boudoir picture of herself up in her bedroom mounted next to a whip. I think she loved that I was here reading to y'all today. <laughs> So I'm going to be reading two things, um, both relatively short. Uh, the first is, uh, and both of them are trying to get at how to answer the question of what I'm up to these days, because there's not an easy way to answer. I have a one-year-old and a three-year-old, and I'm home with them all day, and I'm also trying really hard to keep working, and it, I'm often failing at that. So that's what this is about. All right, Woo! let me see how I get this up. Hang on. There we are, thank you. Is there, is the feedback kind of, is it okay? No one cares, okay. <laughs> All right, on writing. When I'm not writing, I'm not writing a comic called Coyote where a young woman witnesses a group of coyotes walking through the middle of her neighborhood which sets off an unraveling of self through anxiety. I'm not writing the most beautiful treatise against beauty. I'm not writing a novel called This World Is Not My Home, where a ghost fills the walls of a house with flowers and scraps of poetry to protect the current occupants. I'm not drawing a series of women in armor surrounded by leaves and sunlight. I'm not writing the children's book everyone assumes I want to write. I'm not drawing still lives or people on the bus. I'm not writing a pathetic memoir. I'm not writing a memoir about poetry and love. I'm not writing a memoir about seeing three birds flying and crying from envy at how freely they're able to move. I'm not writing a memoir about holding my stillborn niece and how that haunts my experience of motherhood. I'm not writing a memoir about intergenerational trauma and bearing witness to my own unanticipated resilience. I'm not writing a memoir about being embarrassed by memoirs. I'm not writing a memoir about prohibitions on memoirs. When I'm not drawing, or not writing a memoir or novel, I'm also not writing any kind of poetry. Not prose poems, not poems made of fragments, not tightened and compressed poems, not conceptual poems, not visual poems, not poems heavy with allusion to critical theory and pop music. I'm not writing epic poetry, though I like what Milton said about lyric poets drinking wine, while epic poets should drink water from a wooden bowl. I drink water from a wooden bowl and still do not write poetry. I am not writing anything that anyone has requested of me or is waiting on. Not a short comics essay or any other sort of essay. Not a round table response. Not an interview response. Mm. I am not writing Facebook status updates. I'm not writing Twitter status updates. I'm not writing thank you notes or apologies. I'm not writing gallery proposals, grant applications, or panel proposals. I'm not writing book reviews. I'm not writing blurbs, I'm not writing a history of these monstrous times, or of past monstrous times, or of any future times, and not even the history of these visions which are with me all day and all night. There are years, days, hours, minutes, weeks, moments, and other measures of time spent in the production of not writing. Not writing is working, and when not working at paid work, working at unpaid work, like caring for friends, or caring for family, or caring for my house, and when not at unpaid work, like caring, caring also for my human body, and when not caring for my human body, many hours, weeks, years, and other measures of time, 
spent caring for the mind, like reading or learning, and when not reading and learning and also making things like food, costumes, plants, decorative items, and when not reading and learning and working and making and reading and caring and worrying, there's also politics. Yeah. And when not politics, also the kind of medication which is consumption of too much food and drink, of sex or cultural products, of the internet also. And then time spent staring into space that is not a screen. And also all the time spent walking on errands, particularly here where it's very long to get anyone on the bus. Walking to take my boy to school and back too. There is illness and injury which has produced a great deal of not writing. There is the slow recognition that minor injury is endemic to my new body, which is always sore and pulling its scars, scars which I tend to instead of writing. There is disappointment, political outrage, heartbreak, and realistic thinking which has produced a great deal of not writing. There is celebration of friends and family and holidays and markers of seasonal change, which has produced even more not writing. There's pregnancy, which has been like illness and injury and celebration and taken up many hours with not writing. There's caring for elders, researching the cost of home hospice care while Capito chills in the refrigerator while I do not write. There's being anxious or depressed, which takes up many hours. There's trauma, which is brief and clear and also lingers around and emerges unpredictably as if it will forever. Trauma is always the indirect producer of so much not writing. There are times with friends spent in the production of not writing. There's talking which is like writing and which produces not writing in equal measure to producing writing. There's sleep, which is sometimes dreams, which is closer to writing in that they're not intruded upon by necessities of all the paid work, care work, social expectations, romantic love, or talking to people. There are photographs one takes of oneself and other people and these also produce not writing because it's simpler to document how unreal this life feels than to make it solid through writing. There is dressing and undressing, sometimes too much, particularly when one has to meet new people. There is the way that the lives of others seem only enviable when they say, I wrote this, read what came from my sharpened heart and deep feeling brain, when all my time is spent not writing. Like right now, when I should be dealing with bills, mail, laundry, my bedroom, months of emails from August onward, even though it's now February with bath and song and bedtime routines and my children, with my jobs, with my care, with my contents in my refrigerator, with the cat's litter box, with friendship, with Facebook and Twitter, with teaching my son how to hop on one foot, with taking my daughter to the cardiologist, with my body which wants to exercise or sleep, with, with my body which wants to rest and drink some tea, with my body which wants to take a shower and get cleaned up, which wants sex, which mostly wants to swim, even though it's far too cold. There is envy, which is also mixed with repulsion at those do not have a long list of not writing to do. It's easy to imagine not writing because there have been years and months of days that I've thought the way to live was not writing since I knew what writing consists of. And I've thought, I do not want to do that. And writing steals from my loved ones and writing steals from my life and gives me nothing but pain and worry. Or writing steals from my already empty bank account. Or writing gives me ideas that I do not need or want. And yet, I frame the years and months and hours and minutes of my life as not writing, a half step removed. My son's encounter with a perfect strawberry should pull me back into the room, a lesson in the joy and necessity of unfiltered sensory pleasure. Instead, I think, I am not writing about watching him eat a perfect strawberry. I often wish it were otherwise. Okay. Now on a very different note, Thank you. Woo! So this is how my days are actually spent. Um, I, so February 1st is Hourly Comics Day, um, and I, there's no way in hell I could do that, so I just took notes all day and drew comics when I could this month about what happened that day. I think I'm gonna make some comments about us. If I were to draw you as an animal, what kind of animal would you like to be? A snake. <laughs> Why a snake? Because snakes are cool and wiggly. Mm, what about your sister? A raccoon. Why a raccoon? Because of how much she loves trash. <laughs> yeah, that tracks. <laughs> Meet snake. He'll be four years old in nine days. He admires Ernie, but knows he's a Bert. 
I like playing with kids who are orderly. <laughs> he loves spiders, carnivores, babies, and tap dancing. He's very into rules, order, and being right. Did you know that Raffi is wrong? He thinks everything grows, but everything doesn't grow. Cars don't grow, chairs don't grow, a spoon doesn't grow, concrete doesn't grow. He's been asking about death since he could first form sentences. He has more love and capacity for physical affection than his small body contained, and he is always touching me, like all the time he is touching me. If I'm cooking or pooping or climbing a ladder, he is touching me, y'all, it's a lot. Meet Raccoon. She's one and a half years old. She loves dogs, sticks, crayons, and cozy accessories. She also loves trust falls and will just throw herself backwards on things. What the fuck? One friend says Raccoon is the most authoritative, authoritative person I know. She has some kind of very cool magnetic charisma. Like when she first started getting into sticks, I thought maybe I should start getting into sticks. And then I realized I was trying to impress a cool toddler and put the stick back. But only when Raccoon wasn't looking. Mom, can you turn on the light? Snake, it's 3 a.m., go back to bed. Can you please turn on the light first? Oh, okay, buddy, then bed. What's going on? Do I have a nosebleed? <laughs> hey, Mom. What's up, buddy? But. Wouldn't it be so cute and special if Raccoon and I die next to each other? What are you doing out there? No, I mean when we're elders. Hey, Mom, can you please get me a plain bagel and yes, milk? Hey, Mom, do kids sometimes die? But... <sighs> 7 .50 a.m. This is what my blood vessels tell me to do every day. But a mouse took a stroll through the deep, dark wood. Belly button. So he skipped from the oven and into dough, all ready to rise in the night kitchen. Mom, my stomach has been growling for a hundred days. Could you please get me an apple and cheese stick? You got it, Snake. Hey, Mom, I'm doing something cute with our little tot. Come see. Ah! Hey, Mom, let's play hide and seek. I'm hiding. 7.51 a.m. When you die, I'll keep your ashes to remember your wife. Wife? I mean life. I love you, Mom. <laughs> Belly button. Editorial note, all questions were expertly answered with patience and honesty and sensitivity to age appropriateness because I am an excellent parent, usually. Thank you. Hey, Mom, when the sun expands, will Jupiter still be made of gas? Hey, Mom, why doesn't Winnie the Pooh wear panties? Hey, Mom, if a werewolf bit you when he was a person, like, during the day, would you still get turned into a werewolf? Hey, Mom, why did all the kids on bikes say I couldn't be friends with Macy? But, hey, Mom, if a love spider bites you, you fall in love with the spider for a whole day. Do you know what love spiders eat? Seeds and human skin. Hey, Mom, you should make a comic about a love spider. Mom, what do I do if a stranger comes into my room at night? What do we do if there's a fire? What do we do if there's a tornado? Snow. Hey, Mom, why do some people not speak English? Why do some kids say boys can't be friends with girls? What would happen to a little kid if the mom and dad died, but the kid doesn't? Down. Ah. Hey, Mom, I have a very, 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 very tricky question for you. Why do we have lips? <laughs> hey, Mom, why does Calvin, Calvin and Hobbes, bully Susie? Why does his teacher get mad at him? He's not very nice to his mama. Hey, Mom, I think you forgot apples. We have to go back to the store. Down! We can't go back to the store. You'll be okay without apples, all right? 
you seem frazzled. Did you drink too much coffee again? I need you to take three deep breaths and then apologize to me for your okay? These are all true. Wow. I love you, Mom. Hey, Mom, what if you and Dad break police rules? Or what if police make a mistake and you go to jail? Who would tell me? <laughs> I miss all my little buddies. I can't wait for spring so I can see them again. The spiders and ants and birds. I have a very good spring idea. We can get some glue and some bird seed and stick the bird seed to the end of my shoes. And then a bird will see it and think, ooh, that looks nice. And we can swing together. But that's a plan for spring, not today, okay? <laughs> hey, Mom, can we go get some glue? <laughs> yes. Listen to the Winnie the Pooh audiobook for the third time today. The wonderful thing about Tigger is Tigger's a wonderful thing. Ball. When you learn to bounce, you should keep it slow, so you gotta keep your bounces low. It's gonna be great, it's gonna be great, it's gonna be great. Strike me down, give me all you got. Bounce me, trounce me, flounce me, pounce me, do it, do it, do it. It's gonna be great, it's gonna be great, it's gonna be great. The voice actor playing Tigger is putting a lot of sexual energy into this performance. I wonder what the voice actor looks like. I should look it up. No. Remember what happened last time. Ooh, the voice actor playing the cat in the hat's putting a lot of sexual energy into this performance. I wonder what the voice actor looks like. I should look it up. <laughs> nah, I'm just feeling myself right now. I'll be good when Tom gets home. <laughs> Three hours later. Hey, love, how is? Hi, I love you and I need you to not touch me. Can you take the kids? I need to sit in the bathroom alone. I'm so sorry I'm yelling. I have a very good question. <laughs> I guess Raccoon is tired. I'll be back down in a few minutes, okay, Snake? Okay, night, night, my sweet little tater tot. <laughs> Tongue. Tongue. Tongue! <laughs> Quick calculation, child delight versus disgust and risk of, risk of contagion. Tongue. <laughs> <laughs> she loves it so much. <laughs> no. I wish there was a moth in my room. I would lure it close to me. And I would cuddle with the moth. And feed it to a hawk. <laughs> and then I'd get to cuddle with the hawk. Wouldn't that be so nice? <laughs> Three hours later again, almost 9 p.m. Special thanks to Snake and Raccoon, Aww. who are just the best. So this is our logo made by Son and Zimmer here in Chicago. It's a snake, obviously. <laughs> That's the new logo. That's the new logo. <laughs> turns out, uh, <laughs> my cable's off. 
Well, we have two shirts left. This is an XL. To the back? Like middle. middle? Oh, shit. <laughs> Here comes the shirt. Nice. <laughs> yeah, nice. That was a... <laughs> oh, man. Uh, actually, can we get one more round of applause for Marty Gallagher? Yeah, please. Getting <laughs> ahead of ourselves. Yeah. Sorry, yeah. See the legs?